When people hear the term genetic cloning, they immediately focus in on what Hollywood has presented, which is things like in Star Wars where all of a sudden you have massive armies of clones, or some TV show or late night sci-fi movie when you kill the villain, but the next month his clone is back. In reality, genetic cloning is a lot less complicated. The basic idea is what's called genetic cloning is you're making copies of DNA. Now, you can talk about it at the individual gene level, and that's what scientists often do, or you can talk about cloning an entire organism. Now, let me go through the basic process of how you do gene cloning, and then I'll talk about cloning an entire organism. So, the idea of gene cloning is that you take a section of DNA that you're interested in, like a gene, and you insert it into some other cell, a host, who grows up, and every time that host cell copies its own DNA, it winds up copying the, uh, the DNA that you've added to it your desired clone. So you begin by cutting the desired DNA out from whatever source it has. And you do this using a special enzyme called a restriction enzyme. Then you glue that DNA into some other DNA called a vector DNA. And the process of gluing DNA is called ligating it, using an enzyme called ligase. You then insert our newly combined DNA with the vector DNA into your host cell. Then, once that host cell has the vector DNA in it, it starts to grow. Now, you can never quite be sure which cell in your test tube got the DNA versus which ones did not. And that's why you have to do what's called select for expression. Look to see, is it expressing or showing its new uh, traits? Organism cloning is where you take the nucleus from one organism, say me, and you take this nucleus and you put it into an egg cell from some other donor organism. And by replacing the original egg's nucleus with mine, we can now implant this newly created egg cell into a, some surrogate mother who gives birth to a little baby me. You've actually seen this process done before, only without a lot of this manipulation. It's how we get identical twins, because you started off with one cell, it started dividing, made a ball of cells, got separated into two identical balls of cells, and those grew into genetic copies. So identical twins are examples of natural clones. But let's take a look at how we do this genetic cloning a little bit more in detail. So in this diagram here, we can see our desired DNA in green. The actual gene that we're interested in is in the darkest green, way over on the right. This blue circle with some other bits on it is our vector DNA. A circle of DNA like this is called a plasmid. Now we cut our original DNA, the green, with a special enzyme called a restriction enzyme that cuts at specific spots or sequences of DNA. We also cut our vector DNA with the exact same restriction enzymes. We can then mix our combos of DNA and add our ligase enzyme and we get a newly recombined or recombinant plasmid right here. Then we insert that down into a bacterial cell. Now you can see in red is the bacterial cell's own chromosome, but now it has this additional DNA. Now all we have to do is feed this bacteria and it does what bacteria loves to do, as well as most other creatures, and that's having little baby bacteria. So each baby bacteria has a copy of the original cell's chromosome, as well as its own copy of our recombinant plasmid. Now, in our test tube, we'd have other cells that didn't get our vector, and so they too will be copying, so we don't know which ones have the newly recombinant DNA in them and which ones don't. And that's why we'd squirt them onto a, a petri dish like this and allow them to grow. And in this little diagram, you can spot the ones that have the plasmid because they're the ones that are glowing this bright red. Let's suppose our desired DNA actually encoded for a red fluorescent protein. All right. That's gene cloning. Organismal cloning, perhaps the most famous example of this, is Dolly the sheep. And what they did with, to make Dolly the sheep is they got some cells from an adult sheep over here, all the way on the right, who's donating a nucleus. And then they got an egg cell from a different uh, breed of sheep, and they took the nucleus out of that egg cell. Then they combined the ennucleated uh, cell with the nucleus from the mammary cell. They allowed those uh, newly made zygotes, essentially, to start to grow and got to a point in which they're called a blastocyst, which is this big mass of cells. And they implanted those into surrogate mothers. And when those surrogate mothers gave birth, they gave birth to uh, a sheep called Dolly, who looks just like the original nuclear donor and looks nothing like the surrogate mothers. 
And that's an example of organismal cloning. Now, you may be thinking, wow, this is awesome. I'd love to have a whole bunch of little mini-me's. You got to be careful. This process is still kind of experimental. For example, Dolly is the one survivor out of roughly 270 odd failures. And a lot of people have some uh, ethical dilemmas about having a 270 human failures. Now, obviously, if you've paid attention to the news, you've heard about improvements in this. And a lot of farmers are actually using this to make clones of some of their best animals. But still, the process, if you make a mistake with a cow, you have hamburger. If you make a mistake with a human, you've got a lawsuit. And that's a problem.